So look with me at chapter, uh, chapter 37, verse 26. And Judah, one of the brothers, Judah says to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. These people are traveling down to Egypt and not lay our hands on him. And this is, I don't know if this is, if he means this or it's just covering, but he says, after all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. Judah says, listen, we don't get any money out of this deal. It, we could sell him as a slave and make at least the, what it costs to buy a slave. And then he says, oh, and anyways, you know, he is our brother. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's not kill him. Let's sell him as a slave to a foreign country and never see him again. I don't know if it was just for the money. I don't know if there was some compassion there. But Joseph is, ends up being sold off as a slave. And as his caravan heads down towards Egypt, his homeland and his family and everything he knows and everything he loves just disappears like a speck over the horizon. And off he goes. He's not sold just once. He's sold twice into slavery. He's sold to, to, to these traders. And then when he gets to Egypt, he's sold again. Sold once, sold twice, thrown in a cistern. It's, it's, it's a painful beginning to this story. And then his brothers feel like the tracks are covered and it's the end of the story. I mean, this, this is it. It's the end of the story. I mean, we took him, we sold him, we sent him down to Egypt. Understand in those days, there is no Skype, there is no FaceTime, there are no cell phones, there is no no communication at all. There's not even a mail system where he can send a letter to his family in Canaan from Egypt when he gets there. They know it's all over. He's as good as dead. He's gone. They take the cloak. They kill an animal. They put blood on it. They take it to their father who just weeps and is broken over his child. But what's he to think? He's dead. I mean, all 11 of my boys wouldn't lie to me, would they? And end of story, right? But it's not the end of the story. Sometimes when we've been thrown in a cistern, been sold as a slave and sold again, sometimes when it's the darkest and most painful and difficult times of life, we feel like the story's over. Sometimes we feel like it's done. I mean, we're down in that cistern and we're looking up and we don't even see a little spot of light. We see nothing but darkness. And we see no way out and no hope. God is not done writing your story. God is still at work. God is still present. God is still sovereign. Your story is not over and God is still writing it. God is still at work. God is still present. He is still on the throne. You'll get through this. It may not be easy. It may not be quick, but you will not be alone. If you know God through faith in Jesus, you will never be alone. And you can always know that God is on the throne. And he's doing something. You may stand on this side of the story and look and say, there's no way out. There's no ending to this that can make any sense. But sometimes on the other side, you have a different perspective. That's what happened with Joseph. One more spoiler alert. I'm going to take you to chapter 50. I'm going to tell you the end of the story. But what ends up happening is his family ends up being brought to Egypt. And they're restored in relationship to Joseph. And Jacob, his father, is still alive and he's reunited with his father. And, and, and Joseph cares for his brothers, the brothers that threw him in the pit, the brothers that sold him as a slave, he cares for them, but finally their father dies. And they think, now that dad is dead, now the only reason Joseph hasn't killed us at this point is because dad's still alive. But when dad dies, they are terrified he's gonna take vengeance on them for all they've done to him. And in, in chapter 50 of the book of Genesis, verses 19 to 20, they're terrified for their lives. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Listen to this. You intended to harm me. Your intentions were bad. You intended to harm me. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. How do you go through a 20-year pit, a 20-year time of darkness, a 20-year time of slavery and abuse and come out on the other side? I mean, Joseph's on this side. He's 17 years old. And he's thrown in a pit. He's sold into slavery. And it just goes down from there. And you're going to hear the story in the coming weeks. You're going to read it in the Bible. But, but he's looking ahead and he can't see the ending. And 20 years later, he stands on the other side and he looks back. 
You know in a lot of those dark days when he's in jail for doing nothing wrong, when he's in slavery, he didn't see the other side of the story. But about 20 years later, he's able to look back and say somehow, even though you meant this for bad, the God who's on the throne, the God who rules and reigns, that God meant this for good. And he brought me here because through Joseph being in Egypt, the entire nation of Israel was saved. And through that nation came the Messiah, Jesus Christ. God was on the throne working even when Joseph on this side couldn't see it. And God is on the throne. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever your cistern is, whatever the slavery is, whatever the, the fear and the brokenness is, God is still on the throne. And you will get through this in this life or the next. If you know Jesus, you'll make it to the other side. And someday you'll understand, but you may not for a long time. 